To jazz. Now, I'm not a, I don't consider myself a jazz guitarist. I understand jazz to a degree, but it's not really my style that I play. I did learn it, studied it, and whatever. Probably still only played 10 jazz gigs in the last 20 years. I'd play fake jazz. Anyway, how do we do that? If you only know a pentatonic scale, you can play jazz. If you've got your blues scale sorted out, you can play jazz. For instance, if we're playing an A minor chord, good old A minor pentatonic or blues, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you know where those notes exist in the pentatonic shape. So we have those notes. If, for instance, I now take this note up an octave, it gives me another note that was already in that shape. If I take, uh, let's say, this one up an octave, that's the same note. It's already within the chord shape. If I then take this one up an octave, it gives me this fret. So there's another note, it's in the scale. Right, these notes are important because they're the notes of the chord. They're the notes you want to target. You can play any note and make it work if you've got good direction, obviously technique to pull it off, your rhythm's good, and that last note is king. So, for instance, if I'm playing my pentatonic shape, I want to finish my lines on every string on these notes of that chord shape. So, I can play... The pentatonic scale is like a skeleton of this chromatic stuff I'm going to do. And chromatic is every note, for those who don't know. So I'll play... See, I've even played this note. It sounds horrible if you play it like that, but... There you go. So if I apply this now to every string... Automatically dribbled my way or and that was the simplest way of doing it just chromatically going down or up on those two and then down if I want to make it more interesting I'll start wiggling around a little bit more so I'm now playing those That way, those that way. I'm playing those notes that way to get still to get to there at the end. Or whatever, do whatever, whatever way your fingers wiggle. Try and wiggle them towards a good note. If I start thinking of patterns, you know, that kind of concept. Get to it any way you want. You can go behind the chord if you want. This is the idea, chromatic dribble. That last note is really the one you wanna attack. So for instance, now I might play the arpeggio thing that I did in the last video, one of the last videos. into a jazzy sounding thing. Next level kind of stuff I would try and do would be combining other scales. If you know your Mixolydian scale, this is helpful because between the pentatonic slash blues scale and the Mixolydian, you end up getting chromatic notes. 
almost every note available. So now, when I'm playing my A7 chord, I might play a little bit of blues. Then I will combine it with that other idea, and I want to land on this guy here, the major third. So I might play... Something like that, or... Repetitive pattern. Change the pattern. Do whatever you want. This is just an idea of how to make it sound jazzy if you want to sound jazzy. Doesn't have to sound jazzy. You can make it sound rock and roll. One of the main differences is the, the swing that you put in it. For instance, if I play the scale in a rock and roll kind of way. It would be straight, da, 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 da. If I'm playing blues or jazz, they come from the same swung rhythm. So if you're going to play in a bluesy, jazzy way, you still need to have that. That kind of swing rhythm, the shuffle, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, that's it. Just chromatically dribbling through your chord shapes. That's essentially what jazz is. It's just a full-on jazz player knows a lot of chord shapes and they can wiggle their fingers in whichever direction they want. So that's it. Hopefully that worked well for you. Enjoy, sign up, hit the bell, do stuff, practice more, don't be lazy, hit me up for lessons if you want to go deeper into this stuff. There we go, that'll do.